Hi, in this tutorial we're going to add images to the newborn packages page, but we're going to work with it in a little bit more detail than we have in previous videos involving images. So the client has given us two images that they would like to display on the left hand side of the screen while the content is next to it on the right. So let's start by going into right before the newborn three hour session here and putting our image, our first image in. So let me bring up the list of my files. And the first one is Helmet Baby, and it's a width of 200. So I'm gonna move in here and we'll put in an image tag and I need to go, right now we're in the pricing folder, right? So we're in under newborns.html so we need to get to the images folder where helmet baby is so i have to tell it to go up a level and then find images and then come in to display helmet baby so we'll say dot dot slash to go up a level then find the images folder and then in the images folder is helmet baby w200.png. So I'm going to save that and let's see what happens on the page when we refresh. Okay, so we have the helmet baby image here, but the text is coming down below it, right? A heading two tag has its own spacing so it starts a new block or a new paragraph underneath of it. So if we want this text to float up next to it, how can we get it to do that? Well, first let me put in the other image in here as well. And this one is Frog Baby. So let's refresh. Now if I wanted this image underneath, then all I need to do is to put in a break tag and that should be below the other one. There we go. So now what we need is this text to float up next to the images here. Now there's a couple of ways that we could go about doing this, but what I'm going to do is create a division. We're going to have a division with the images, and then we're going to have another division that has this content that's going to float up next to our images division. So we can start to use what are called div tags to create divisions within our text. And then we can use the style sheets in order to control the look and the layout of those divisions. So if you think of it in terms of you know, this content belonging together and then this content belonging together, we're gonna to create two divisions. So I'm gonna move into my HTML and I'm going to create a div tag. So we say div, and I'm going to give it an ID. And an ID is a unique identifier, and you make up a name, so I would make it something easy and identifiable as to what it is. So I'm just going to say left, because I want this division to be my left division. And then after the last image, I'm gonna close the div tag. So now I've created a single division that contains both images in them. And next I'm going to create another division around my content area. And I'm going to give it an ID of content. And then at the very end, after, I'm going to leave my copyright information down there. So after my unordered list, I'm going to put in a closing div tag. And this is where it can be helpful to start to use uh, some HTML comments in here to say, I'm going to say end content. And up here, I'm going to paste this to say end left. Now, if I save my source code and then I come back and I refresh my browser, there's no difference. There's no physical difference here. They look the same. So in order to get our divisions to do something different, we have to control it through style sheets. So I'm going to open up my style sheet 
and we can reference our division in here by using its ID. And when we use an ID, we use a pound sign symbol and the name of the ID. So we'll say we have a left division and then we also have a content division. So then our style formatting will go inside these curly braces for the left division and then the right division. So let's just see if we can tell where they are. And so sometimes an easy thing to do if you want to see where this division actually is, let's give it a background color. Probably not going to keep the background color, but we just want to be able to identify it. For the content division, let's make the background color yellow. It's going to look really bad, but we'll be able to at least see where those two divisions are. So now we can see this is definitely the left division and this is definitely the content division. So let's work with the left division first. So let me separate this out. So we'll leave it red for now and then when we're all finished and we don't need to see where it is anymore, we can take it out. So what are some other style things that we can do with a division? You can see that it creates an entire block. So division is a block element. So by creating this division, it put this into one block. It put all of this information into another block. Well, we can give it a width. For one thing, we can say width. And let's just say 250 px. I know that the width of my images was 200 pixels. So I know 250 pixels should be wider, a little bit wider than my image. So let me refresh this and we can see definitely, yes, the area that our left division is taking up. Now we can do the same thing here for the newborns. So let's give it a width and let's just try 600 pixels. So now even though these are both narrower and they could fit next to each other on the screen, it doesn't automatically do that. A simple way to get that to to get this to come up next to it is to use what's called a float. So I'm going to say float left. And when I save and then refresh, you'll see that this floats to the left and the rest of the content jumps up here and stays to the right of it. So it moves it. It's actually taking this division that's in the red and taking it out of the regular flow of the rest of the document, and then this flows up around next to it. And you can see that this is still being, this is still taking up the width that we had specified here. So what if I take that out? What does that do? Let's save that and refresh. Ah, now you can see that it's come up and it is taking out the rest of the width of the screen. But then we have 275 and then the details coming back, right? Once it is not, there's no space back under here, that it jumps back over. So it's flowing back over to the left side of the margin. So we know that the width of this division is 250 pixels because we specified how wide that should be. So if I took this division and said that it has a left margin of 250 pixels, then it should move this over to the right. So let's try that. So we do margin left 250 pixels. I do want to point out when you are specifying this with pixels, not to put a space in there. If you do, then it won't work. So that's a common mistake to make. So just uh, wanted to point that out for you. So we have a left margin of 250. Let me save that and we'll come over here and refresh this. And so now you can see that this lines up over here nicely, right? Because you can see this area right in here is the 250 pixel margin. So now if I delete these colors, which were helpful just to see where our divisions were, can come back here 
and see how we have our images on the side and this content flowing up next to it. Now the other thing that I would I kind of would like to do is put some more space at the top of this division so that it comes down and starts around the same place as the newborn does. So what I can do is on the left division, we'll say padding top and let's just try 20 pixels. And I'll refresh that and that comes down. If I really wanted it to be even with the top, then I could make this maybe 17 pixels, a little less, and that moves it up a bit. So that was breaking this out so that we had a division with images and a division with our content. Now, this has images in it, but we could have anything else in here. We could have links, we could have a navigation menu in here. We floated this to the left, so you have a float left and you have a float right. There is no float center, so you can't float something in the center. And so this is applying to the entire division. So anything that's inside the left division, we use the ID. So when we're referring to an ID, we use the pound sign symbol and the name of the ID. So since this is in our style sheet that is used currently by all the pages in the site, any page that has a division with the ID left will automatically pick up this format. And any ID that has content will automatically pick up this format. So ideally, all of the other pricing pages would have a similar format where we have the content and details and then maybe a couple of sample images.